Hi guys, uh, welcome back to the channel. I'm photographing uh, common terns today and they're a fantastic little seabird. And they come into the UK um, to nest over the summer, so they migrate in during the summer and they're a fantastic subject for this time of the year. And I'm at um, a, um, a reservoir, so I'm on a causeway and you will hear cars go past. It can be quite a noisy location, but the wildlife photography is fantastic. So I don't care about that. So excuse the noise in the background. Uh, not really too worried about that. And um, I'm looking to get flight shots because this is no good for um, uh, general sort of pictures of birds here because I'm quite high up and I'm looking down on the water. So I normally like to be really low to the ground when I'm photographing small animals. So I'm waiting for the terns to fly over. And uh, I've already seen the terns, it's fantastic. They, what they basically do is a big circuit and they'll come round on a circuit, they're looking for fish and then obviously as soon as they catch a fish they'll be back to the nest to feed their young. And uh, they generally nest on sort of either shingle spits or on little sort of um, little uh, islands in, say, scrapes with shingle on them. And then a lot of our uh, reservoirs and uh, nature reserves also put out artificial nesting platforms. So there'll be a, a wooden platform that floats with um, shingle on it. So um, that's all good. So we're encouraging the terms in. And uh, they're, as I say, fantastic to photograph. Now, as I'm doing birds in flight, um, I'm, I've brought my 200 to 500 millimeter zoom, not my 600 mil prime. And the prime is great. It's got super uh, autofocus. It's, it's a brilliantly sharp lens, but it's so, so heavy. And I find for flight shots, it's better to hand hold quite often. So this lens, I can hand hold uh, without having to put it on a gimbal head and slightly restrict my movement. So I'm gonna hand hold. That's the first sort of thing uh, I'm gonna think about when it comes to doing flight shots for birds. Now I will use my 600 mil uh, with a gimbal head, uh, but because the turns are quite fast moving and also they bank round and they change direction, I find that hand holding the lens, uh, camera lens, is a lot better for common turns. And that's why I've got my smaller lens rather than the prime uh, on a gimbal head. Now, when it comes to photographing birds in flight, they're a fast moving subject, especially the terns. And actually, I can just see a great crested grebe over that side, so I might have a look and photograph him later as well. We'll see how we go. But I'm here for the terns. Um, so, I want to be on continuous focusing. So, if you're a Nikon user, that will be AFC for autofocus continuous. If you're a Canon user, it will be servo, and that means the same thing. And for most other camera manufacturers, it'll be AFC, and that stands for autofocus continuous. And that means the camera is going to continually refocus on the subject, in this case, the common turn, while I've got the shutter button held halfway down. So it means I can track that moving animal and hopefully keep it in focus. The other thing I'm going to do is instead of using one single AF point, which means it can be quite easy to miss the bird's head with a single AF point, I might just slightly hit the wing or miss it completely, I'm going to have a small group of autofocus points. And again, I don't have too many, so on my camera I can go for 5, 9, 27, a whole heap of uh, AF points, but I'm going to go for 5. And again, excuse the noise in the background, someone just pulled up with a radio blaring, hopefully it doesn't uh, come across on the audio too much. Um, and uh, as I say, 5 AF points, which means it gives me a little bit more um, flexibility when it comes to getting that bird in focus, because if I don't quite get the middle AF point on the bird, one of the other AF points around that bird will pick the bird's head up. Now if I use more than five, I'm just as likely to pick up a wingtip and then the bird's head and beak would be out of focus and that's not what we want. So just to summarise, because there's a lot of noise going on, uh, I've got separate audio so hopefully it'll be okay. I've got my 200-500mm zoom so I can hand hold and it makes it easier to track a fast moving bird in flight rather than my 600mm on a gimbal head. I'm on continuous focusing, so AFC for most manuf camera manufacturers, servo for Canon, and I'm on a small group of AF points rather than a single point, and I'm on a group of five. So now I'm going to shut up for a while, I'm going to wait for the turn to circle around again and hopefully get some cracking shots. Um, I've also got mixed lighting, so sometimes it's sunny, sometimes it's cloudy. Ideally, I want to shoot the turn when it's uh, sunny because it lights up the face and it gives me a little catch light in the eye which brings the eye out and it makes it look sharper uh, and it also it makes the eye stand out from sort of the, the rest of the bird's face. So yeah that's about it. Cracking location even though it's quite noisy at times. I've seen the turn circling uh, so it'll probably be circling or a couple of them are circling. 
They're probably going to circle most of the day. Really looking forward to this. I'm going to spend the whole afternoon um, here. And my, as I say, my primary focus is on the common terns, but there's lots of other seabirds flying over. We've got cormorants, uh, there's grebes, great crested grebes in the background. There's lots of ducks and geese coming over. So we'll see what we get. Oh, little egrets. I've also, a few months ago, uh, photographed great egrets here, but on the other causeway, which is a slightly older road. So yeah, all good. I'll speak to you soon. I'm very, uh, very much looking forward to this. I've been working hard on my photography jobs for the last few weeks and creating lots of um, video lessons. So this is my first time out uh, for a little while just to photograph and I'm really, really, really looking forward to it. So I'll speak to you soon, guys. Hi right, guys, one other thing. When I'm panning, especially when it's uh, a sunny day, I re I'm really, really careful to just take note of where the sun is. So uh, I don't accidentally pan, pan round as I'm panning around, I don't hit the sun because if I have the sun in this lens, because it's a 200 to 500 mil lens and it's a, I've got a digital SLR, I'm looking at the strength and power of the sun through my lens. And the last thing I want to do is to pan round into the sun. Now the sun's over there anyway, so if I'm panning this way, I've got no chance of accidentally panning into the sun. But if I was panning that way, I'd need to be really careful not to accidentally pan, hit the sun and maybe damage my eyes. So it's really important just to be aware of where the sun is sort of mentally make a note of that. So when you're panning and you've got the bird in the frame and you're excited about getting that bird in focus and uh, getting a great shot that you don't accidentally pan and hit the sun and damage your eyes. Fantastic. It's just come right round there and then it's going round that side. I'm gonna move over to that side in a minute because I've got a slightly better direction of light, but the light's okay. It's uh... and it's just spun back round that way again. So I've got the light on its face this time. So that's great. Um, but I think if I go over that side now, I can have the light literally directly on it all the time because the sun's here and it's shining that way. So when I've got the turn coming this way, I've got the sun on it. But when I'm shooting that way. I'm backlighting it and that's not so great because generally for, um, for a bird photography, I tend to like the sun shining on their faces so you've got to catch light in the eye. Um, when I'm doing furry animals, you can either front light or back light because you get a nice rim lighting effect around the animal. But with the birds, I think front lighting or more or less front lighting is best to be honest. So uh, I'm gonna move over that side, camp down there and uh, wait for the, the uh, turn to come around because it's doing a big circle either this way or that way. So either way, uh, I've got a regular uh, chance of uh, getting this, uh, this common turn. And as I say, I'm going to spend all afternoon and my main focus, I mean, I'll photograph anything else that comes across. I've got some shots of a cormorant, uh, a couple of grey leg geese, so they're okay, but it's a common turn that I'm interested in. But as I say, uh, yes, it's fantastic. I'll speak to you soon, guys. I've had a brilliant afternoon so far. I've got shots of common terns. I've got shots of them, uh, the common terns in flight. I've got one where it's got a fish in its beak. So it's been brilliant. Um, the light's been pretty good. Uh, you know, direct sunlight along with a bit of cloud, but I've had enough good light to get some decent shots. Uh, I've got a great crested grebe. I've got uh, uh, grey legs in flight and I've got cormorants in flight. So it's all good. I'm gonna stick around for another hour or so, uh, but I think I'm, you know, I've got some good stuff in the bag. So um, I hope you've enjoyed this vlog. And uh, yeah, if you have enjoyed it uh, and you haven't already subscribed to my channel, if you can consider subscribing, that'll be great. And if you do subscribe, press the little bell icon and you'll be notified when my next uh, video is uploaded. It's a bit quiet this afternoon, not quite as many cars. So that's been really good as well. So I'm gonna go over to the other causeway now and see what I can find. Uh, but I've got my common turns and that's what I came here for. I'll probably come back here again and uh, have another crack at it just before I leave, but it's been brilliant. So I've got some nice common turns in flight and I've got one with a, a, cut, a few shots where the common turn's got a fish in its beak. So it's all good. I'm really, really pleased. So bye for now, guys.